is this? Well, let me make something clear. Only three countries, I believe, at this point have done any sort of significant deleveraging. The United States, South Korea, and Australia. Again, to reemphasize your point, we're talking about total debt. Government all debt and in, private all in, yeah. debt. Because we can't say this enough, and I know I've tried over and over. The cancer at the core of the world economy is debt. Everyone from from governments down to Joe Blow has been over leveraged, and that has to be worked off. Knowing that only three countries have worked that off, you're going to see economic slowdowns as people are forced into deleveraging. Now, I'd love to throw it to you, Anthony, on this because um, you were seeing each one of these economies slow down, and we're tying that mostly to Europe. We always talk about Europe, but Buck brought up China. And some of the emerging market stalwarts like Brazil, they're going to slow down because they're so dependent upon the U.S. and Europe. Am I wrong? No, no I, I think that the United States is going to be exporting a lot more of this sort of economic trouble than we're going to be importing it from around the world. And that's going to hit you know, it's going to hit countries like Brazil. There's only so long that, you know, Turkey, who does have a good economy right now, is actually going to be able to hold <laughs> people up. Uh, but it's actually even worse, I think, in Europe because it's not just Greece. Spain, there's like no way they're going to hit their fiscal austerity targets whatsoever. Even the German economy is slowing down. So we have a slowdown not just in Europe and the United States, uh, but it's, it's kind of all over Europe. It's not just Greece dragging down Europe. And then you do ha you have China. But let's also point out on debt, uh, it's, not, it's not always all debt is bad. It's the no. over leveraging, right? right. So it's not, it's not that we have to get to this point. And I just bring this up because someone's going to push back and say, oh, you know, it's like, oh, that's not really the problem. The point is, is like you can't be over leveraged. The fact is we can't be at 200 you know, trillion or, or whatever, roughly, right. roughly, whatever, whatever <laughs> right. the number is. I mean, debt is how you're managing future spending, or you're spending it now for what you're going to earn in the future. And, it may, it makes, and if we're not going to earn that in the future, where's this going to come well, from? Well, it makes sense that the, the more developed countries have more debt because they're the ones that are financing more. They have more but, assets, right, too. Right. But, you can, but the, we have gotten ourselves in so deep, and we've depended on growth. <laughs> Uh, we've depended on debt for growth well, this is for the, so long this, this, right. that that's actually dried right. up. So we don't have real growth. We just have the debt left I over. See, this is that's the issue. The I mean, I, I think I'm not the only one who starts to lose faith in some of the economists at this point. Right. Because we have the IMF chief economist, Olivier Blanchard. He said that the latest findings, these GDP numbers from this year that I showed you, underscore the importance of credible government plans to shrink budget deficits in future years to win breathing room to avoid immediate cuts that cripple an economy. Unless you're under tremendous pressure from markets, you should do it steadily but slowly. So what he's telling the countries of the world is cut back on spending, but not too fast because you need growth. And if you do this wrong, we're all in a whole lot of trouble. Well, and I think the other problem here is that this global issue has become so politicized internally and externally. So while we're over here doing stimulus, we're laughing at the Brits trying austerity, saying that's not working. And over there, they're trying austerity, laughing at us. That, that, you know, stimulus isn't working. No one's talking to one another and planning for a global collapse and thinking about, OK, how can we all work together here and, and ease this, this pain around the world? I mean, it sounds a little kumbaya to be talking about how interconnected we are. But we are. Add to that our immense and I think reckless uh, federal aid, uh, foreign aid policies that we have uh, left completely unchecked. We are not revisiting those policies anymore. And this is a recipe for Will, disaster. Will, you're my, you're my total debt guy. You've been hammering this for months on this show um, appropriately because I think that people don't really have a sense of this. SC is right. Austerity has become a very politicized term. People say austerity, it's bad. That's why we don't have the growth. When you're talking about austerity as the European countries are doing it or as the UK is doing it. Not it actual means, austerity. It's, but it's, it's, it's right. just means spending more than right. you take in by a lesser amount. I mean, you're not actually seeing right. dramatic cutbacks in this no. country. They're still running deficits. So, so a couple of quick points. Um, Anthony talked about uh, there's two things depressing the world economy. One is all these countries across the world slowing down, not just the U.S. And the second is how do you fund growth without what has been the driver, which is debt? I mean, that, again, that's not just countries' growth. It's human beings' growth. Mm -hmm. We've, we have been pushing home ownership, which was debt-fueled for 30 years in this country, to, to make it look like we're growing. Um, so I, how, how do we deal with this going forward? Is there any kind of um, world synchronization? I would suggest to you one thing, one thing, and we have seen every bank across this world begin to print money, and the idea there is to inflate your way out Inflation of Inflation has to be coming at some point, but I think it's interesting because even the IMF notes that of all that sort of, all that list of things that are to be concerned about, and I think everybody looks at the economy, the global economy is concerned about them, the two ones that they say are the biggest and the most imminent are in fact the fiscal cliff, which we could throw up a chart to show people the effect that that would have on our GDP. Um, yeah, the one that looks really, really small, that is in year one of, of implementing, you know, the, the sequestration, the cuts and everything else. Um, there's the fiscal cliff and there's the possibility of EU dissolution. So those two economies mm -hmm. are the drivers for this whole thing. But to, to follow on, Will.